Hey everyone, me again. Time for another episode of the GM School with your friend Ivan Van Norman. So we're going to talk about large parties today. Now obviously with role-playing games you can have as big of a group as you want or as small of a group as you want. Um, I've played in games that are two people, um, even just me, myself, a player and a GM only running one guy, um, all the way up to a 12-player game, which isn't as uncommon as you think, and yes, it's absolutely exhausting, but it can be very um, rewarding in its own way. So, um, anyway, what we're talking about today is uh, kind of seven and seven players and up is what I would consider a large group, you know? And uh, really, the key the key thing to keep in mind with large groups is just to put a little more detail into your uh, campaigns. I know it sounds a little intimidating, but it's not impossible. Essentially, you just need to give them more ideas in which to focus on. All right? if basically, if your team is big, make your scenarios bigger. All right? Allow for some more generic, open established choices, and don't get stuck in that like one guy is debriefing you type of scenario. For example, in that scenario in which uh, you know someone might be debriefing you or giving your players a mission, instead of just putting them into a tightly cramped war room with only one guy to talk to to answer all of your players' questions, you know, put them in a big open camp city and uh, allow some of your players to talk to the commander and allow some of them to go out there and just um, you know chat with the soldiers and see if they can gather information in that way, you know? It might create a little more chaos in your games, but really, that's all right. They need that details to focus on so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't lend them to more distraction because they're getting bored, because they feel like they can't participate because you've, you've, all, you've scaled the scenario down too small. And the big thing to keep in mind is, is that it is nearly impossible for the players to not split up at some point in a larger campaign. It's almost always bound to happen. But again, that's fine. The key goal in there is to just spend equal time between your players' situations and do your best to converge upon them frequently. You can kind of implement a classic, you know, you take the high road and I'll take the low road type of scenario in which it will eventually converge somewhere you know, at the end, or even several times in the middle of the path, you know, if they want to choose to get together in a group or whatever, or back into the larger group. But, you know, uh, just make sure that while player, say, group A is is doing their actions and and taking care of um, combat or exploration or whatever, that player or group B has a lot of stuff to think about as far as where they're at and what they choices they need to make as well, too. Don't make it easy for them, you know? And especially if you're going to have to divide your attention, give them lots of stuff to think about so that when you move over to the next group, you're like, okay, what's happening? And they can launch right into their decision-making ability and shame on them if they haven't had chance to think about it, you know? That's pretty much what it comes down to. So uh, I hope that's helpful and um, that gives a little bit of a, um, a little bit more to work with when you're doing your bigger games. Um, feel free to send me messages, you know, send me a message in my inbox if you have more questions or even better, leave it in the comments fields below and uh, bring your friends in, subscribe. Hopefully this stuff is helpful. So, and if not, let me know. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you on the next round and uh, take care. All right? Bye.